What's up everybody, it's FYGP and uh, today I want to take a look at the neo-Nazis in Ukraine that were responsible for the 2014 Maidan coup. Well, I should not say responsible because there were other forces involved as well, but I should say instrumental, instrumental behind that coup. And how? Well, one, one of those guys, one of the guys from a, a wing called C14, which is the youth wing of the uh, right wing Svoboda, Svoboda party in Ukraine is going to explain it to you. Let's take a look. So what he's saying right here is that they are the guys which the uh, West pays to because they have fun. They have fun killing and they have fun fighting. We are the flagmen. We are the flagmen. We are... Because we have started a war that has not been seen for 60 years. Okay, and uh, basically what he also said, which is the most interesting part, Maidan was the victory of the nationalist ideas. Nacionalisti, jak by byli tam kluczowym faktorem odnośnie i na froncie. Zaraz dużo bardziej spekulacji. No na co każesz było nie bardzo tam, no LGBT, śniki tam, posłowstwa, kaj, tu skiki tam było tam. So there's speculation saying that there were only a few neo Nazis. There were not much neo Nazis on Maidan. Maybe about 10% of real ideo ideological ones. Nazis. No na co skiki tam było tam 10% tam zapajanych idejnych. No też pytanie w tym, co może tak kazać i wyszedł, jeżeli taki nie był na winie, nie zna, na skiki od tych od 10%, czy tam nawet może też mniejsze było. Ja myślę, że na listy było chyba tam też 8. No na skiki to w proporcji efektywności wpływu, na skiki to składało po prostu galopujące, bezkonieczne podwyższenie efektywności. Nie było tych 8%, a by efektywność upała na 90%. To on. If it wasn't for them, Maidan would, the effectiveness of Maidan would have dropped by 90%, according to him. If it wasn't for them, then Maidan would have turned into a gay parade. That is what he's saying. Interesting facts right here about Ukrainian nationalists in that war. Now, Max Blumenthal and Jimmy Dore talked about it as well. I want to just play Max Blumenthal real quick, who is going to give you an overview of what is really happening with those neo-Nazis in Ukraine. By the U.S., which was arming them, they're using him as a human shield, a human propaganda shield. They're using his Jewishness. That's uh, Zelensky. That's about Zelensky right now. He's talking about Zelensky. To cover up the reality on the ground and the reality that people in Donbass have lived through. And it's kind of disgusting when streets across Ukraine have been named after uh, Roman Shukevich, the commander of the Ukrainian uh, partisan army that collaborated closely with the Nazi SS and presided over so many pogroms. There have been stadiums and streets named after him. Stadiums and streets named after Stepan Bandera, the uh, founder of the Nazi-allied OUNB. He's a national hero in Ukraine. And you actually see Christia Freeland, the number two in Canada, 
at pro-Ukraine rallies, the granddaughter of an actual Nazi collaborator who is Justin Trudeau's number two, waving a red and black UPA fascist flag just weeks after calling the Canadian truckers Nazis and using emergency law to crush their movement. And she's waving this flag in the name of democracy. What complete hypocrisy. What a bunch of liars. This The propaganda is just too unbelievable. And so finally, the situation on the ground today is very dire for the Ukrainian regular military. They're commi- so he says that it's very dire. The situation is very dire for the Ukrainian military. Uh, that's what Max Blumenthal says. Well, I believe it's dire for both sides. Russia is encountering major problems as well. Their assault did not look at all like what was expected from the modern, modernized Russian army with a bunch of old uh, Soviet area tanks and one to two year conscripts in the Russian army invading it. But let's take a look at what Max Blumenthal says. Man in control structure was knocked out pretty much on the first day. They've lost control of the air. So he says that the command structure of the Ukrainian army has been knocked out on the first day and that they have con- lost control of the air. They're in a com- they're in complete disarray. Russia is rolling like a 40 a 40 mile convoy on Kiev. It's surrounding the eastern battlefront completely, I- enveloping the uh, what the uh, Ukrainian power power militaries and military. So who's left? Who's really the main fighting force on the ground? Well, in Mariupol, which you mentioned earlier, Jimmy, this city that is near Donbass, which was taken over by Azov in 2014, it is under the complete control of these neo-Nazi forces incorporated into the Ukrainian National Guard. And there's video and testimony of them preventing civilians from leaving. And why are they doing that? Because Zelensky, who's the hero and who uh, every... Um, liberal wine mom is now gushing over and having a, you know, orgasming over and on, on their Facebook pages. Zelensky ordered all males of combat age from adolescence to age 60 to remain in the city, in their cities and in their countries and in the country to fight. And so Azov is enforcing that order. There's been video of them actually attacking civilians, trying to leave Mariupol, trying to leave the fighting. And meanwhile, there and in the city of Kharkiv, they have started organizing average citizens, training them in guerrilla warfare, and handing out lots and lots of weapons, small arms. What could possibly go wrong? And what could possibly go wrong when Zelensky, the hero of every American liberal, has called for the release of hardened criminals from Ukrainian prisons to participate in the battle and take those weapons? It looks like they're preparing for some kind of serious style situation where instead of the jihadists aligned with Al-Qaeda who are backed and armed by the CIA, you have neo-Nazis leading the battle, arming citizens, and weapons just flowing through the country to destabilize another country on Russia's frontier. I don't think that's going to work out, but that is, seems to be the U.S. plan. And so it's totally cynical. They're trying to uh, use these fascistic forces to lead some kind of civil war that would cause so many more deaths, so many more migrants, and so much more disaster. But the U.S. Is, uh, re- the U.S. regime is willing to do anything, it seems, anything, and to spare and to any cost and see any amount of bloodshed in order to take on Putin. And that's where we're at today. Exactly right what Max Blumenthal was saying here. Well, the Jimmy Dore Show is so, one of the only shows on YouTube where you will get accurate information about uh, basically what is happening in Russia. He also puts on clips of Noam Chomsky, for example, uh, what Noam Chomsky had to say about it. We can take a listen. Ukraine might join a Western military alliance would be quite unacceptable to any Russian leader. This goes back to 1990, when the Soviet Union collapsed. Uh, There was a question as to what would happen with NATO. Uh, Gorbachev agreed to allow Germany to be unified and to join NATO. It's a pretty remarkable concession, with a quid pro quo, that NATO would not expand one inch to the east 
That was the phrase that was used. So Russia has been provoked. Well, what happened? NATO instantly moved to East Germany. Then Clinton came along, uh, expanded NATO right to the borders of Russia. Now there are uh, the Russian, the new Ukrainian government, the government after the overthrow of the preceding one, uh, the parliament voted, uh, I think, 300 to 8 or something like that to move to join NATO. This Which is, you can understand why they would want to join NATO. You can see why Petro Poroshenko's government would probably see that it's protecting his country. No, no, it's not protect. Crimea was taken away after the overthrow of the government, right? Uh, and uh, he's not protecting Ukraine. Is uh, threatening Ukraine with major war. Uh, that's not protection. Uh, the point is, this is a serious strategic threat to Russia which any Russian leader would have to react to. That's well understood. So that's uh, predictable, predictable, exactly ha happening, exactly what he said. Here he is. So here's Stephen Cohen. He unfortunately passed away. So rest in peace to Stephen Cohen. He was one of the foremost, foremost Russian scholars on the globe. Let's take a look at what he was saying about the situation. I believe those are old clips from a couple of years ago, but they're still relevant. Uh, if we move the forces, NATO forces, including American troops, uh, to toward Russia's borders, uh, where will we be then? I mean, it's obviously going to militarize the situation and therefore raise the danger of war. And I think it's important to emphasize, though I regret saying this, Russia will not back off. This is existential. Too much has happened. Putin, and it's not just Putin. We seem to think Putin runs the whole of the universe. He has a political class. That political class has opinions. Public support is running overwhelmingly in favor of Russian policy. Putin will compromise at these negotiations, but he will not back off if confronted militarily. He will. So these are the the smarty pantsies guys in the world that know about this situation the most. And they're, they all predicted this is going to happen if the United States keeps pursuing this policy. And of course... Exactly right. Maybe they have Max Blumenthal saying something. Okay, so this is uh, Pat Buchanan, 1999 book. <clears throat> Not an emp uh, a republic, not an empire. By moving NATO onto Russia's front porch, we have scheduled a twenty-first year, twenty-first century confrontation. And it's nineteen ninety-nine. We have. Uh, so I'll stop there for a moment and bring Max back in. And it's I I, I, I still can't get over my jaws agape at. Uh, just the journalistic malfeasance that's being perpetrated on the people of the United States right now, the propaganda that is they're being bombarded with at every turn is uh, overwhelming. I mean, I don't know how a normal person, like if I didn't study this, if I was just a regular comedian, I probably wouldn't know any. I would think the same thing. But though, it, it just keeps happening. We keep make, inventing a new boogeyman. There's never not a boogeyman. For exactly right, Jimmy. Exactly right. The United States. And why did we want to get Ukraine into NATO? Many reasons. A big one is so that we could sell them weapons. Because Exactly right. Because NATO, just uh, let me stop right here. NATO is nothing more than a huge weapons business for, you know, uh, defense contractors basically selling older u.s weapons to every european country yeah they want to sell weapons everywhere including into war zones and i'm sure that the stock of raytheon and uh, maybe general dynamics and other defense contractors has gone up in recent years uh, in recent uh, weeks well i saw before the crisis started it was going up significantly with the ramping up of of the crisis that occurred uh, in the month before this confrontation, this Russian invasion, which actually happened right now. So yeah, this is the news. Neo-Nazis are deeply uh, embedded in the Ukrainian government. And um, obviously, uh, if, you know, Ukraine would have remained neutral, if there was guarantees that Ukraine would have remained neutral, Russia would not have done what it is doing right now. See you guys another time. This is FYGP tuning out.